four, three, two, one. Main engine ignition and liftoff of the Atlas V rocket with LRO Elcross, America's first step in a lasting return to the moon. Hi everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to the OpenSat Kit Core Flight System Tutorial. We just watched the launch of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter in 2009. LRO is still orbiting the moon today and is one of NASA's first missions to use the Core Flight System architecture. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the CFS architecture. Here's a look at the flight software architecture that's orbiting the moon. It has three layers that allow applications to be ported across different hardware processor and operating system combinations. The bottom layer is the platform abstraction layer, and it has two parts, the operating system abstraction and the platform support package. Each of these components has an application programmer interface, or API. Together, they allow the next layer, the core flight executive, to be portable. The CFE provides flight software services for the applications that are defined through its API. The bottom two layers are called the CFE framework. This framework is managed by NASA as an open source project on GitHub at the link on the screen. Applications make up the third layer and they provide mission functionality, very similar to your smartphone. Components at all three layers are designed with compile time and runtime configuration parameters that allow the system to be adapted and scaled to meet a mission's needs. The CFE provides five services to applications. Executive Services manages the application runtime environment and keeps track of system resources used by an app. The Time Services manages time and allows apps to retrieve time for things like time stamping data and computing delta time between events. The Event Service allows apps to send time stamped text events with parameters, very similar to a printf function call in C. Tables are a collection of application parameters and the Table Service coordinates the loading and dumping of tables between a file and an application. The fifth service, the software bus, provides an application publish and subscribe messaging system. Each service has the same architectural design that contains a library component and an application. The library component defines the services API and provides the functionality that is used by an application. The application provides a command and telemetry interface to the ground. For example, consider the event service. An application sends an event by calling the event services send event function. This results in an event message being sent on the software bus and routed to the ground. There are different types of event messages and one of the event service features allows the ground to filter which types of messages are sent. If the ground wanted to enable debug events, then they would send a command to the event service app to perform this operation. Each service app periodically sends a housekeeping packet that contains overall status. However, it's often necessary to gather more data from a service, so many services also offer the following two methods. One method is to send a single telemetry packet in response to a command. For example, you can command executive services to send data about one application. A second method is to write large amounts of data to a file that can be transferred to the ground. Executive Services uses this method if the user wants data on all of the applications. The Software Bus service is the most prominent service because it provides communication using messages, and messages define each app's functional interface. This figure shows how the Software Bus is used to provide communication between applications. Software Bus messages are defined using the CCSDS packet standard. CCSDS is a multinational forum for the development of communications and data systems standard for spaceflight. An application that wants to receive messages must first define a software bus pipe and then subscribe to messages it wants to receive on the pipe. A pipe is essentially a first in, first out queue. An application that wants to send a message simply calls the software bus service to send a message. The sending application has no knowledge of who will receive the message. Note that software bus pipes can also be used for control flow because receiving apps can pull or pen for messages. In other words, non-blocking or blocking in terms of execution. The real power of the CFS comes from its applications and the ability of apps to be reused across platforms and missions. 
The CFE API has been very stable since the launch of LRO in 2009. This API allows developers to write once and run anywhere the CFE framework has been deployed. As the CFS gains popularity and even becomes pre-installed on processor boards, the command and data handling system will essentially become commoditized, allowing users to focus on mission-specific apps and advanced technology apps such as autonomy. In addition to the runtime context provided by the CFE framework, applications need runtime support from other apps. Apps need a way to receive commands from the ground and send telemetry to the ground. These apps are called command ingest and telemetry output respectively. There are actually multiple versions of these apps because different environments may require different features. The CI and TO apps used in some test environments may not be the same as those used in flight. I have created versions specifically for OpenSAT Kit because I wanted to use text tables that could be easily manipulated by tools for automated configuration. ITAR must also be considered, and it has prevented Goddard Space Flight Center from releasing flight versions of CI and TO as open source. Note that a CFS startup script defines which apps are loaded during initialization, so it's easy to load different versions of CI and TO on different platforms. The scheduler app provides a means to coordinate and schedule applications, allowing developers to create a synchronized flight software system. A synchronized system helps with load balancing, ensuring hard timing deadlines are met, test repeatability, and system diagnostics. The scheduler app is not to be confused with the underlying operating system scheduler. However, the application task priorities and the scheduler app schedule must be designed to complement one another so the overall system goals will be met. This slide also identifies some software bus control flow options that can be used to help achieve your system goals. This figure shows the three apps that create a runtime environment for all apps. The color has been changed to green and the app names have been prefixed with kit to indicate these are the versions included with OpenSAT kit. Every three seconds, a housekeeping request is sent by the scheduler and the Hello World app responds by sending its housekeeping packet that includes valid and invalid command counters. The Hello World app defines a no operation, also known as a no op command. When this command is received, the app sends an event message containing the app's version number and it increments the valid command counter that is reported in the housekeeping packet. A separate tutorial covers creating a Hello World app. This concludes the tutorial. We have only touched on the surface of many aspects of the CFS. There are additional tutorials on the CFE, apps, and tools that go into much greater detail. Thanks for tuning in.